Hello and welcome back. We said at the end of last week's video we'd have a, a bit of doubler out this time so I've got my Duchess of Athol out there. So I've had a, had a model for some time but I don't think we've seen it on the channel before. I think it's a fairly early model as it's got the, uh, the horseshoe type magnet on there. Let's give it a little bit of power and we'll just get that to run a little. It's relatively smooth for such a, a sort of well played with item. And uh, let's give that a little bit of a run the other direction there. And perhaps a little bit more power. And then we'll just calm that down. So I don't think the wiring loom is uh, quite original. I think it's probably somebody's removed some bits out of there, but it sort of does the trick. So we'll get that to run the other way. So I think what we'll do is we'll just bring that gently to a stop and then we'll have a, a closer look over the the chassis and the, the bodywork. And there's the uh, the body shell. It's a, a gorgeous colour, sort of a, a deep sort of maroon. It's definitely uh, seen a bit of life. Let's see if we can get that in a bit, a little bit tighter and have, have a look at that. Lovely heavy handrail running along the side there. Let's have a look across the top there. So. There's plenty of wear around where, where it's been sort of picked up. You, it's definitely picked up a, a bit of uh, character, shall we say. And the, uh, the plate underneath the, uh, the the foot plate at the back here, where the, uh, the drawbar goes through it, has taken a little bit of a abuse over the years there. You see the, the paintwork's definitely chipped away from there. The, the motor's definitely going to be visible through the back of that cab. Let's uh, turn that over and have a, a quick look at the top of the cab again there. So it's quite a, a spectacularly beautiful thing I think. Nameplates there seems to be some type of transfer applied to it. I don't think that's printed on. Uh, one side is, is slightly better than the other. I think there are a number of variations of this model over the years. I think it was sold in, in, a, in a set in the late 40s, early 50s, um, perhaps with um, a couple of the LMS coaches. I, I do have a, a several of those on, on the railway today. We'll have a, have a look at it with, uh, with, with, with those, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see if we can get that to, up to camera there, and just in focus. So we've got the buffers painted up in silver. Let's have a look down, down the inside of the model there. So you see those lovely ties there, where the handrail's been uh, held onto the model. I think they're they're quite good. So I think I've got the uh, the writing up upside down as usual. So there we go. We've got uh, Hornby Double O, and then and down here we have uh, Made in England Meccano Limited. So it's a, it's a fairly sort of weighty thing. And again, like m many of my models, there is a sort of a, a chain or a drop, a, a link there, which, which should be hanging down. I think many of the models had those. Uh, it seems to be long gone there. And a great big hole at the front there where this, uh, let me just see if I can grab this uh, securing screw and nut. So there, so that would go through there. And then we've got the, the Hornby Double O spanner here. Here we go, let's bring that up into focus. So yeah, so that's the, the all important spanner. So it drops down quite nicely to to, to recess that under there. So we'll, we'll pop that down, have a swift look over the tender. So I have a, an effort to try and keep this video a little shorter. I think last week's video, along with all that footage from uh, Shielden became quite lengthy. I'm getting quite a bit of glare there. So it, again, it's definitely been handled. It's, uh, there's no no getting away from that. It's uh, def been uh, enjoyed so that that coal insert there is loose but it doesn't fall out i think with a triang model the other day we were looking at and every time you turned it over it, it sort of it fell away so i think this this detailing is all quite nice for very basic but it does give the the, the general feel of what's gone on there that uh, pin there for the drawbar has got a little bit of a bend in it so you've got these lovely uh, handrails which are separately fitted wire handrails am i getting that in focus there all that detailing there picked out in black. Again, this model is really cold and my hands are quite warm, so we're getting some uh, condensation sort of forming on, on the model. A little bit of a bend in there, but uh, like many of these models with bends, unless I really need to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave them alone through fear of uh, sort of breaking things. I'd rather I can put up with a, a tiny bend there. So well, the coupling there looks to be the original one. I have noticed it. It doesn't quite like some of the points. When you 
it goes backwards over them. It can be problematic, this tender. Um, it, everything appears to be in line, but uh, just occasionally we get, get a problem when, when we're running, running backwards over the point work. So we'll just pop that down and we'll have a, a swift look over the, yeah, the chassis here. I think it's got some quite interesting features apart from the lovely uh, looking horseshoe magnet. I've just got some scribbling on there to remind me which way around that is. Let's see if we can get that a little closer and keep that in focus. So that, that, that wire there is definitely not factory. It's been very crudely soldered on. It's not my soldering either. But uh, as it uh, as it works and it, it's uh, it's not really causing offence to anybody or you know it's not visual. I don't see any need to change it at the moment. There are a number of non-factory bends in the valve gear, which again, it all runs very smoothly, so I really don't see the need to sort of take those out of there. So, uh, skate not too badly worn. Lovely uh, truck on the front there. I think these cylinder blocks are separate. Both sides are separate, and they've got their own individual, quite large securing screw there. I think that's quite a, quite a nice feature. I think you can see the where the truck runs through there. Yeah, it's all, all quite nice. It's, Let's just turn around and have a look at the back end of it there. See the, the brushes. Whoops, I was just losing focus there. So the brush brush holder there and there and somebody soldered on onto that one. Drawbar separate to the rear truck, so it, it does move separately. These run at a sort of unrealistic angle, so there's lots of play in there so you can get around those uh, those tight curves. Great big uh, securing screw on it there, but uh, yeah, I think it's a quite a pretty thing. So we'll, we'll get that back together and we'll have a, a good good look at that running on the railway. Again, nice top view of that magnet there. So we'll just pop that down. So a number of people in the, in the last few months have asked about my uh, rolling road here. So this is just one of the, the normal Hornby ones, which I can't remember the number of. And uh, during the first lockdown, like many of us, we were trying to entertain ourselves and I, I thought I'd uh, service the, the the, uh, the double O locomotives I had, so I, I, I knocked this up. So that's just a piece of track there, and I've, I've snipped it out and put it on a bit of a spacer. I did find that dropping it down rather than keeping it at the same level as the other tracks tended to work a lot better for me. Um, so it, it is just held in place. Let me just see if I can um, undo these. So it's just held in place by the, uh, the rollers here. So we can take that back there. And then there's just this little piece of balsa wood I put in there just to keep the rail in line. So when you've got a locomotive with tender pickup, it can sit on there. So, but I have got it, um, I've got the, the cabling sort of uh, held together there. So I've got the third cable there just, just in case of that. It's just separately fitted like that. that. That sort of fits in quite nicely between between the rollers and holds it in place. So it's easily removable, but uh, as I'm swapping between the two at the moment, I've decided just to, to hook, the, hook the cables up together. And I found that sort of quite an effective way of using it. Of course, rolling roads are sort of limited in use, really. Uh, faults that occur going around curves and things don't tend to show up on them, but uh, they're quite nice for sort of general running and sort of getting the model sort of up and running again. I'll pop the number of this uh, Hornby rolling road in the corner of the screen. So I've got to run the rails there. We'll uh, just see if we can roll that backwards and then pick up the coaches which are just sitting behind her. So we'll just go a little bit of power there. It sounds like we have those. Let's have a, a quick glance in there. All right, we'll, we'll give that a little power and see if we can just give that the once around. So away we go. So no work has uh, happened on the elevated section. This week, in fact, no work on the railway at all. So it's been a, a fairly slow week in, in terms of that. Fairly busy week in other respects. So that's coming around really nicely. Let's see if I've got enough cable to come over here and get this coming through the curves. under the elevated section back into the station I think we'll just let that sail straight back around makes such a lovely sound so we'll 
bring that to the station then we'll, we'll see if we can have a, a swift look over a couple of those coaches and then perhaps we'll just jump the other side actually let's get a, a slightly different view of this this time see if we can slow that down there we go lovely lovely sound with all of that uh, tin plate rattling on the rails so coaches are actually let's just take that a little bit further through and uh, then we'll uh, better pick up the, the coaches a little better I think I'm sure I'll regret this in a moment so if we just have a, a swift look across the top of the coaches and definitely, uh, whoops, I think we've just lost some focus there. There we go. I think we, we have focus back there. So definitely in the play-worn category. Uh, some worse than others. L roofs, I was going to call them lids, have definitely suffered a little nice bit of a bend in the side of that one as well as some um, live rust, shall we say. And I'm unsure about the roof on this one. It looks to me like it may have been uh, repainted at some point but it's quite a pretty coach let's just pop this one off and have a look at it so again I'm unsure of the numbers and the ages of these items let's see if we can have a look over that but uh, give the give the wheels a bit of a clean up so I've sort of collected these up over the last last couple of years let's have a lovely sort of rattle again models quite cold in my hand but uh, been tin plating so my fingers will will leave marks on those so uh, yeah so it's quite a nice thing again this is the one I think possibly that may may have been repainted the roof on that one it uh, looks, looks too almost too good now I'm never going to be able to get those back on one-handed so what we'll do we'll just have a quick look at these so I'll get them back on and then we'll we'll jump the other side so again I'm just not pointing the camera at the correct things at all there. So this one's definitely a, a little bit more play worn than the last one. Whoops. Let's have a look there. Yeah, there we go. Slow focus. Some bends in there. The end of the coach is just a little bit away. But I think they're very in keeping with the uh, the age and the uh, the uh, the wear and tear on, on the locomotive. So. I don't really feel the need to start painting these myself. So I know many, many of you would want to uh, sort of tidy them up more, but for me, I think they, they sit quite nicely like this. Let's pop that down there. And again, this one. Again, let's have a look, see if we can get some focus on there. So I don't know whether there's been some colour shift in that little badge under the, the centre window there, it's not quite, uh, I don't know if I can get a close-up of that a photograph, I'll just pop that in so you can see that. Uh, I don't know whether the, uh, the colour, the printing colour has shifted somewhat, but I think these are really rather lovely things. You see plenty of rattly noises coming from them, lots of scratching through the roof there. So I think what I'll do, I'll get these back on, I'm never going to manage that with a one hand, I don't think. Or am I? Let's, let's have a look. Let's see if we can do that the once. Not the once, the three times. We have the three coaches. So, there we go. And I was going for the wrong coach there. So, we'll get that one on. It comes a bit more tricky when we've got the, uh, the station platform there. So I have to look at what I'm doing rather than the camera and then the uh, the camera drifts away. I'm going to run that locomotive forwards a little bit just to create a little bit more space. Possibly the worst place to stop the, uh, the locomotive on the points there. We could have uh, got some dead parts or dirty parts. So let's uh, get this uh, brake coach back on there. Have I got that? There we go. Had a bit of a fiddle with, with the couplings before I got this lot up. 
little bit, little bit of work was required. Let's, let's see if we can get that the once round. We do have a, a coach there on the railway I mentioned we'd have a look at last week, now I remember it, so it doesn't go with these ones. It's, ooh, something didn't sound quite right there. Maybe I didn't get all of those coaches on, but uh, we may well have got away with this. We might find out when we get to the Diamond Crossing down here. Is everything going to go over nice? Yeah, nicely behaved. So we'll just deposit that in the station again. And we'll, uh, we'll put the handheld down down here and we'll just have a quick look at that coach that I mentioned. So let's, let's pop that there. So the relays I, I got made up quite a while ago now, still, still haven't managed to get those installed, just haven't had the time. So let's have a swift look at that. So this one, again, suffering from the rust. So I, I bought a couple of items from eBay and this was one of them. But uh, it's uh, more significant on the other side here. Let's have a look at that. So definitely away from there but no hiding it but I think it's just in keeping with these items that I have and there's definitely lots of play value left within this this one does have the uh, the plastic wheels so uh, yeah well, hopefully we'll get a couple more to go with these with this one sorry these this one and then we'll uh, we'll have a look at that on the railway but ideally it's been a bank holiday weekend I'll get the chance to get those installed on the railway, a couple more points electrified. I've sort of run out of boards, Oop, lose and focus, I've run out of boards to make some more of those up. I've got a few more relays left, but uh, no more boards. So we'll just uh, leap the other side now and we'll, we'll have a quick tear around from the centre of the railway. So here we are on the other side, so we'll just have a, a quick run around of this perhaps. That footbridge I moved because of all the uh, elevated stuff going in, just makes it easier to work, doesn't really fit over there at the moment. So we'll just uh, run back into the station here. And we'll just bring that gently to a stop up there. There we go, I've just uh, got to untangle my feet. Tangled up already and only just started uh, playing with the trains on the inside of the railway. So let's, uh, let's give that just an another go and uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Let's see if we can get a couple of interesting sort of shots of it. Let's just stop it there. Why don't we go through the point work there and we'll just run that once more on the, uh, so not once more, we'll run that once around the uh, the outside line. That's, uh, I'm uh, doing completely the wrong point there. I'm doing number 15. So what, what I want really is number 13. So it's uh, that one there. Yeah, sorry about that. Again, I was pointing the camera in the wrong place when I was looking down for the switches. So let's keep an eye on that. We'll bring that through. There we go, all relatively well behaved. So I'll just get the, the right switch this time. We'll make that one go straight. There we go. And then we'll just uh, run around and see how we do. Gently around here. back under the elevated section. I think it's going to look quite interesting once we get this uh, sort of slightly elevated station up there. Ooh, slight hesitation there in the corner. And we'll 
we'll just bring this around and then we'll, we'll stop it and bring it back through the points. There we go, so I need uh, points number 12, I think those are. So let's, uh, let's have a look at those. So we want to make those curved. And let's do a little power. Yeah, I think that's probably, ooh, not looking in the right place again, probably as smooth as we never expect to get through something like that. So plenty of bouncy bits for the points. And I think we'll just uh, return this back to the station. But I think that's probably going to be about it for this week. I said I was trying to keep it a little bit shorter. I think I got mixed up with the videos because last week's wasn't the uh, the show at Shield and was it? It was, uh, it was looking at that elevated track. So uh, thanks again for watching. Goodbye now.